It's a story of bribery, payoffs, and corruption in the FIFA Soccer League, and it is detailed in this new book. Author Ken Bensinger, formerly with the LA Times, broke the story, and he talked with our Juan Fernandez. That's right. The new book is Red Card. It's all about the FIFA soccer scandal, the bribery charges, the payoffs, and stories of corruption. Ken Bensinger is formerly with the LA Times and author of Red Card, and we want to welcome him. Ken, this really does read like a spy novel. I want to find out how you got a hold of this information. How, how did this come to you? It wasn't easy. This, this book took a long time, a lot mm -hmm. of work to get. Uh, I had to do a lot of travel. A lot of visits with people kind of in secret. There's a lot of people who would talk to me only on the condition mm -hmm. of anonymity. And so I was flying around the country and, in fact, the world to meet with people often in um, quiet, out of the way restaurants and cafes where no one was around. And, and they would only talk to me if I promised not to, to record mm -hmm. anything or tell anyone I ever talked to them. Because FIFA is, is, is a huge body, it's powerful. A lot of people look at them and these allegations are, are pretty serious. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this, we're talking about serious crimes, and there's people who have been convicted in this case who are now looking at real serious jail, jail time. And other people who are scared of that we're, all, we're really living in the shadows and still to this day. There's people who won't travel outside of their countries now because of this case. Um, so it, it really has had an impact. And people are terrified of FIFA because even though it's not a government organization, soccer is such a big deal in the rest of the world, so powerful mm -hmm. that people uh, uh, feel that they should watch their back. And we're seeing that with the World Cup, obviously, just how powerful uh, soccer can be. Did you get any flack from either fans or from the folks at FIFA? Fans love this criminal investigation. They mm -hmm. love this case because they feel like the sport has been stolen away from them. Okay. So there's, a, there's actually a great embrace of this investigation from fans. It's very different from soccer officials and from FIFA itself. FIFA was not helpful. FIFA closed every door they could mm -hmm. in my path because they didn't want me to be writing about this, and they still don't. And I, I remember they wouldn't even credit me to to their big events because they didn't want me even setting foot in their in their facilities. Now you put a spotlight on a lot of different things. Which do you think was the most not only surprising to you but also to the public? Yeah, I mean I think that just the incredible depth and, and widespread mm -hmm aspect of this corruption is probably the most surprising. I mean, this wasn't just the very top of the FIFA mm -hmm. infrastructure, but it was everywhere down to the, even the local level. I mean, I discovered corruption even down to youth league soccer in the U.S. and all the way up to the national teams that we see in different countries and then um, the international tournaments and finally the highest levels of FIFA. So it's just mm -hmm. spread throughout. It's hard to turn over a rock in the world of FIFA without finding a bribe. And it just goes to show you just how much money this organization and the sport brings in, right? That's right. It's a multi-billion dollar organization. Every World Cup brings in about five or six billion dollars to, with a B, to FIFA. And that's not counting all the other things, the ancillary things that make money as well, right? And so there's a giant infrastructure, a giant ecosystem of money coming in. And as a result, a lot of people have a huge amount of a stake in it. And the corruption is so bad that all these people, and some of these people, their entire income comes from the corrupt sure. acts. And of course, very serious allegations. How long did it take you to put this together and just, you know, cross all the T's, dot all the I's, make sure that what you were putting out there was as factually correct as you could possibly uh, put out there? Um, from soups, soup to nuts, from the mm -hmm. day I be undertook the project to when it hit the shelves was about two and a half years. Was about how long it took. That's yeah. quite a bit. And now the story and the book uh, just came out just a little while ago, and I understand it's already been optioned for a movie by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. How did you feel about that? Oh, it's really exciting. I really hope that that goes somewhere. I mean, you know, I, I think there, I had a fun time recently on Twitter um, where I mm -hmm. did a dream casting of all the people we thought should play the characters and got quite an engaged group of people. And some of the, the one of the best, most inspired ones I thought was Sepp Blatter, who's the former head of FIFA for many years. Um, someone suggested Sir Anthony Hopkins. So I thought that was a really smart casting. If anyone Googles those two guys, they'll see what I mean. And when you first got news that they did want to option it, your immediate reaction was what? Oh my I'm, goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Why, this is this is my big shot, but it turns out, as as everyone knows, Hollywood's a big, complicated business. So my fingers are crossed, and I hope everyone gets a chance to see this story um, in in the cinemas. But in the meantime, of course, there's the book, and I think the book they'll find has a real noir, real thriller kind of feel to it. Mm -hmm. I wrote it that way, so it wouldn't just be a boring compendium of facts, but a real story.